Stop is the key to success. Stopping the mind from wandering is more important than anything else. Whatever images that appear in your meditation, observe them impassively without engaging your mind with them. This will help your mind to remain still. The purpose of your practice is aimed at stilling your mind, not at seeing images or seeing bright light. The great master, Phatmangkonte Buni, emphasized these words persistently. Stop is the key to success. He hardly spoke of anything else but this. This is what he said: We must be able to stop our mind from wandering, whether it is in darkness, in brightness, at the center of the sphere, at the center of the inner body, or at the center of the Buddha image. His aim is only for one thing: stopping the mind. Adopt this maxim in your practice. Stop is the key to success. Ang Pa de Machio's aspiration. After Long Pa Tamachiyo took the yellow robe to become a Buddhist monk, he resolved that he would preach only the subject of stopping the mind. Over the past 40 plus years, his teachings consisted primarily of stopping the mind. Everything else was secondary. He put his heart into making people understand the importance of stopping the mind, because he knew stop is the key to success. Between the age of 16 and 19. Ang Pa managed to read every volume of the Tipitaka, as well as any important books on Buddhism he could lay his hands on. After reading all these books, he came to the conclusion that reading alone wasn't enough. It is like reading a map without actually making the trip. You miss the excitement of the journey and the experience of getting to the place. Reading Tamat books without actually practicing Tamat and meditation is the same way. You know only the theory, but you lack the actual experience—the sensation, the touch, the feel, the taste, and the flavor of the practice. So he decided to seek out well-known meditation teachers available at that time and apprentice with them. He practiced every kind of meditation technique known to him. Finally, he met the famed meditation master Kunyaya Jan Konokyung. It was through Kunyaya that he learned the importance of stopping the mind. That stop is the key to success. He realized then that stopping the mind was the only way to achieve inner experience. Stop is indeed the key to success. Learning from textbooks and listening to lectures won't get you there. Cultivate your mind by training it to be still. This was the essence of method taught by Kunyai. The more still the mind is, the more expansive and penetrative it will become. Penetrating deep into the source of inner knowledge that only a still mind can reach. This is a different kind of knowledge, more profound than any knowledge one can learn from reading and listening. You can read all the textbooks you want, but unless you're able to achieve a standstill state of mind, you'll never understand Tama in such a profound manner that you want to embrace it as your refuge. This is why stopping the mind is so essential. It is important to start the right way. I wish all of you, both here and overseas, give importance to training your mind to be still. Begin your practice the right way. Even if you may not see the results as quickly as you wish, in the long run, you will find greater satisfaction. You may not see images or see only images that are blurry, but if you're able to feel light. Relaxed and expansive, it is a sign that you're heading toward the right direction. Seeing bright light or images is a byproduct of a still mind. It will happen naturally when the mind comes to the right point of balance and becomes still. This is the result of practicing the right way. It may sound like a slow progression, but in fact, it is quite fast. Some of you may be quick in seeing a Buddha image or a sphere right away. The image appears stiff and lifeless, and it gives you discomfort. This may have gone on for as long as ten or twenty years without you making any further progress or witnessing any inner experience. So you get tired of meditation and even have a misgiving about anyone who says he or she is able to reach high attainment. In this case, 
it looks like a speedy achievement, but in fact, it is slow. If you begin your practice in the right way, the result may appear slow, but in fact, it is not slow at all. Although there is no shortcut in the way of practice, in due time, the shortcut will present itself. So train your mind to be still. Find happiness and joy every time you practice, or at least get to the point where you no longer feel tense, uncomfortable, or bored. If you're able to experience even a brief moment of happiness each time you practice, it is the sign that you're doing it the right way. Your inner experience will improve with time. Meditate today like a kindergarten student. Take it easy and follow their instruction without reluctance, and you'll see good results. When you reach a certain level of attainment, you'll feel open, spacious, serene, and peaceful, and be able to access the source of happiness. You'll feel refreshed like walking near a waterfall, hearing the sound of the water and feeling the cool mist touching your body, or like walking on a cool, shallow stream on a hot, sunny day. Experiencing even a tiny dose of happiness that rejuvenates your spirit is an indication that you're on the right path. Keep practicing with the right method. If it takes you half an hour to get to that point of contentment, try to reach that same point each time. Your speed of getting there will improve as you go, from half an hour to 15 minutes, to 5 minutes to 1 minute, to the very moment you close your eyes. When you arrive at that point, your progress will step up. Your mind will become more refined. The time to get there will be shorter, and the images will emerge more frequently and more clearly. You'll feel increasingly blissful each time a new inner image emerges. Bright light, dhamma, spheres, inner bodies, inner buddhas. Maintain this state of contentment as best you can. When you get to this state of achievement, you'll no longer feel bored, annoyed, or agitated. Instead, you'll find great joy every time you meditate. But if you feel unnatural or have to use too much effort, it means you're not doing it the right way. In which case, get up to wash your face, then come back again to restart. Remember the instruction given you. Follow the instruction full-heartedly like a kindergarten student. I often mention that as soon as you finish kindergarten, you become a PhD. That is, when you practice the right way. And the right way of practice is to stop the mind continually without letting it be interrupted by anything. Even when images appear, don't let them interrupt the continuity of your still mind. Doing this will further improve the stability and subtlety of your mind, at which state more new phenomena will appear and more Buddha images will emerge, giving you a supreme state of blissfulness. Keeping the mind still is still your primary goal. Seeing images is secondary. Practice comfortably and easily. Don't worry about the days and the time that have passed or will pass. Focus your attention on the present and your progress will speed. Meditate with happiness and joy.